morning, this is Monty once again, um, back at it again, doing some some chores, wiping down the car, vacuuming it out, um, reviewing some of the things that are going on today. My cat Lazy Bone says hi. Uh, going to be going to the gym and going to work out later on. Uh, what's going on today? I was uh, reviewing Elon Musk interview with Joe Rogan. You may want to check out the Joe Rogan experience where he interviews Elon Musk. There was a bit of controversy based upon Elon Musk smoking weed. And um, I have to admit, after looking at the, the video and listening to the interview, and I uh, reviewed it a number of times because it was just very enlightening and... Um, I think it just goes to show that just because someone is smoking weed or drinking a little bit, it doesn't negate the uh, importance of the content of what discussed. It was a very engaging interview. Joe Rogan uh, actually got Elon Musk to talk about a number of topics, uh, artificial intelligence, um, how he manages his time to run uh, those three, di at least three different enterprises, the um, Tesla uh, car company, um, SpaceX, and I think he has st still has involvement in the uh, Sun City or the, the, the solar, solar uh, panel company, um, that particular company. And, and, and who knows what else is going on. The boring company where you dig tunnels underneath the city. Uh, he just a, has a lot going on. And uh, just very engaging. Particularly, I think it's going to be very useful for entrepreneurs who want to get some idea in terms of how one individual can manage to come up with all these new ideas and innovations. Um, uh, very seldom do you get, uh, Lazy Bones is asking for something to eat, or maybe he wants to chime in on the kind of conversation. Who knows? Anyway, <laughs> I'll give him something to eat right now. We'll see what he has to say later. Um, but yeah, he, he, he he's a modern day Einstein, as far as I can tell, and I studied a lot about different um, individuals, geniuses. Uh, whether it's Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Albert Einstein, and very seldomly do you get an opportunity to have this type of talent available in your lifetime. So I think it's very engaging, and you guys may want to check it out yourself. Um, if it takes a little bit of smoky weed or drinking in, uh, in order to have an enlightening conversation like that, then I guess a number of CEOs better consider it, <laughs> definitely. Uh, one second. have to take a sip of my Sheila Jeet, which I drink early in the morning as well. Um, but let's see. So, uh, yeah, who am I? I'm Monty Henry, owner of DPL Surveillance and Security Equipment Company. Um, by the way, we're a full-service surveillance and security equipment company. We have lifetime uh, guarantees and warranties on all the products. 24-7, 365 tech sales and customer support. I think we've had perhaps the largest inventory of items that not, not only can you buy, but you can rent or you can lay away as well. And, and we also have uh, a humongous and growing uh, directory of content. It consists of articles, podcasts like this one, blogs, excuse me, demonstration videos, um, just a wide variety of, uh, of content. And you may want to go there. It's a virtual uh, smorgasbord of information. Um, we talk about cybersecurity. We talk about health and fitness. We talk about uh, economics and finance. So, of course, surveillance and counter-surveillance, anti-terrorist technology and products. We talk about cryptocurrencies. <laughs> Uh, you name it, we've probably discussed it or, or, or have it on the agenda for the near future. 
um, for discussion. In addition to that, um, we actually accept Bitcoin, as, as a matter of fact, uh, speaking of Bitcoin, we actually accept Bitcoin and Litecoin as a matter of, uh, in addition to Bitcoin and Ethereum and Bcash. We've integrated that into our shopping carts. Uh, let me see. I should, probably should cut off my ringer. I know someone's going to want to interrupt me, and that's not going to happen this morning. Let's see. At least not right now. So, yeah, get use your, your Bitcoin or cryptocurrency millionaires out there. Use your Bitcoin and your Litecoin and your Ethereum and your Bcash to take advantage of uh, the shopping opportunities on our websites. Um, a, lot, a lot of the true wealth that's uh, being accumulated right now is more, more, a lot of it is actually coming out of the cryptocurrency space and we foresee a future where more and more of the true wealth is going to be um, derived from the cryptocurrency space because it is sound money and it's not over inflated and it's not printed excessively and it's not um, abused and, and all of that. Uh, so <clears throat> we, we think, um, again, the cryptocurrency space, particularly Bitcoin, is going to contribute uh, very hand handily in terms of um, creating a lot of new a lot of new wealth that you're going to see going forward. Um, what else? Yeah, we want to make sure you guys understand we are not big fans of the credit card industry, the Mastercards and the Visas and the American Express. We don't really care a whole lot about those industries. The banking industry, the traditional finance industry. They're all basically extracting a lot of financial resources and talent away from those industries that could very well use it um, as compared to having um, quants, for, as they call them, go over to um, Wall Street and, and, and the banking industry and the finance industry overall. They're not really letting those um, Harvard and Stanford and Berkeley graduates um, utilize their fullest potential, making synthetic uh, contrived financial products. If we think they could be better used, for instance, helping design better automobiles and computers and, and, and maybe uh, robots or whatever, but definitely we don't need any more financial instruments CMOs and derivatives and all that. They've wreaked enough havoc um, in the economy. When you extract uh, like a trillion dollars, as they did in 2008, uh, we think that's more than a, that, that. We don't need any more of that, definitely. So anyway, make sure you guys understand. We now have an alternative to Visa, American Express, and MasterCard, and the banking industry. We can bypass that with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So... You may want to get your hands on uh, Bitcoin, for instance, get 5 or 10% of it, put it in your portfolios, and that way you can establish your own financial sovereignty, okay, and bypass, completely bypass the traditional financial system. Now, moving right along into today's topic, um... It sort of goes in hand in hand with financial sovereignty, mainly because, well, let me, instead of explaining it right off, let's go into the article and let's see what the article has to say, and then you can connect the dots yourself. Okay. Um, the art. This article is entitled "You Become a Nation of Cheapskates." Again, you become a nation of cheapskates. Revolutionary technology. Brings amazing prices, but something feels wrong. Um, from New York to San Francisco, lunch prices are starting to get ridiculous. Most days you cruise past $13 salads and $14 ramen before landing at a Chick-fil-A or, or Chipotle. For example, there's a company called Meal. Meal Pal, a lunch subscription service, 
Restaurants offer one dish each day, always $6.39. You've eaten kimchi bowls, Thai chicken salads, and just about every sandwich in the neighborhood. Meal Pal, which operates in a number of large cities, is a lifesaver for anyone with a net worth south of two commas. But your, but your $6.39 breakfast burrito is the same as the one on the menu for $11.50. These where's the catch, quote unquote, where's the catch deals are practically everywhere now, each causing you a similar dilemma. A dilemma. You take Uber pools home at night knowing even if nobody gets in the car, the ride's still going to be cheaper. Are you stiffing drivers? You let MoviePass buy your tickets for next to nothing when you used to gladly pay full price. Will this contribute further to the decline in non-superhero Hollywood films? You demand two-day shipping for everything you buy on Amazon. Are you destroying the earth one cardboard box at a time? You use the Blue Apron free trial, cancel it, switch to HelloFresh, then rinse and repeat with Sun Basket and plate it. Can decent, easy food delivery service survive? You can practically subsist on all the handouts, and worrying about this feels like looking a gift horse in the mouth. But you've seen companies you liked fail because they charged too little and watched others punish, punish their workers in order to keep running. What are the costs of this race to the bottom, and how does your behavior change as a result of the deals? Are you spending more or spending more wastefully? Just as you're reckoning with the, the privacy trade-offs you make when sharing baby pictures on Facebook or searching with Google, these low prices may have costs you don't see. Price to move. Selling something for less than its sticker price is hardly new, but the tech industry has gone to two new, to new lows. You, get, you might get an ad-supported music subscription that still gives you the world's music, a $100, $100 night mattress, I'm sorry, a 100 night mattress trial, or $50 for referring a friend to MealPal. To grow, companies need to stand out in some way, said Robert Dolan, a professor at Harvard Business School. There's so much emphasis on growing their user base, all other considerations fade away. If a product becomes indispensable, its creator can sometimes raise prices without losing customers. That's why the prices of Amazon Prime and Netflix have risen lately. They're betting that because you love two-day shipping and stranger things you won't cancel. They're right. Larger companies can also afford to make little or no money on some products, betting they will make it up elsewhere. For smaller fries like your family's mom and pop business, they don't have a lot of money to lose. This is harder calculus. Companies are very reluctant to raise their prices, especially in an era where everything you do automatically gets a reaction from the crowds on social media, said Professor Dolan. Spotify could become profitable by raising its prices, for example, but the backlash will be huge. Kevin Gibbon, former chief executive at SHIP, spell, he, he spells that S-H-Y-P, a now defunct clever service for shipping goods, blamed his company's downfall in part on its inability to ship to shift away from charging a $5 fee no matter what you were shipping. And when Mill Pass, uh, Mill Pal explored raising its price 60 cents per meal, users bristled, says its CEO Mary Biggins. Uh, Miss Biggins has been through all this before. As co-founder of fitness startup ClassPass, she witnessed the company grow massively in 2014 because of a $99 a month unlimited class offer. It made no business sense. ClassPass had to pay providers full price for every class but it was the most popular offering of ClassPass until the startup dropped it in 2016, calling it unsustainable. Ms. Biggins says MealPal has been careful to make sure participating restaurants make money. Since they're offering a single dish with no customizations, they know exactly how many to make in, uh, hours in advance. Restaurants can easily make a huge number of MealPal meals, she says. Restaurants have told Ms. Biggins that MealPal 
hasn't forced them to hire new employees, though she couldn't say if they had been able to reduce staff. Uber makes a similar argument. Driver rates calculated by time and distance aren't affected by your fare, says the company. In a few cities, Uber has experimented with raising rates, a small amount with few issues. Nevertheless, studies have found drivers make less than minimum wage in some large markets. Surely your low fare play your low your low fares play some role in that. In general, consumers have been trained to expect a lot for a little, Professor Dolan said. While that's good in many cases, higher prices do help companies stay in business. Besides, studies have shown that cheap things turn you into reckless shoppers. Why buy we buy things you don't need, uh, then do a charge back or dispute when, it, when you realize what you've done. You juggle your credit cards and rewards programs like a professional circus juggler. You trade jobs, I mean, you, you trade gobs of personal information for a week of free meals. Let me repeat that. You buy things you don't need, then do a charge back or dispute when you realize what you've done. You juggle your credit cards and rewards programs like a professional circus juggler. You trade gobs of personal information for a week of free meals. One 2012 study found that by offering free returns, online retailers vastly increase consumer spending. Even when you think you're getting a great deal, you might consider that you're actually paying more. Ultimately, I think the solution is this. Take the cheap stuff while, it, while it's there. Just make sure you know who you're taking it from. If a company wants to pay you to have a new mattress every 100 nights or a, or a new meal delivery plan every two weeks, take it. But you should only sample things you actually buy. At the same, at the same time, I think you should start shipping your Amazon orders in a single box, throwing a couple of bucks in the tip jar when you pick up your meal pal, and making sure to tip your Uber driver. Driver. Uh, driver. All of your favorite companies, if all of your favorite companies do eventually go bankrupt, well, maybe others will figure out how to not participate in this mad uh, race to the bottom. Meanwhile, buy the biggest hamburger and fries you can stuff in your face. It's the least you can do. So that wraps up that article. Um, I just want to make sure you guys understand, uh, look, sometimes you have to support um, businesses and particularly your local businesses and family owned businesses and such and as the article mentions um, if employees are being overworked and underpaid it's probably because we're not contributing to uh, the health and well-being of, of, of these, um, these, these these individuals okay everyone deserves to make a decent wage so uh, as we try and scramp, scramp and, 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 and get by with, with being very cheap, uh, there are consequences, okay? So keep in mind that, you know, uh, if the only companies that are remaining on the planet are going to be Amazon and Walmart and, 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 and those who are giving away products and losing money, then that's not a good uh, situation, Okay. So keep in mind, again, what's going on here and how are you allocating your own financial resources and whether or not uh, the potential college students of the future and the individuals who are trying to uh, grow up like you did and, and hopefully get an opportunity to raise a family, afford college tuition, maybe buy a car, own a house or something, that only happens when, when, when we have... Um, so a sustainable uh, economic model and, and stable and reliable finances of our own. So anyway, as I like to say at the conclusion of every article, you guys uh, keep your eyes and ears open and stay safe out there. Have a good day. Bye.